it's Wednesday, December 11, and it's 14 days to Christmas. His Excellency President David Granger clarifies there is no shake-up in Foreign Affairs Ministry and Environmental Protection Agency working assiduously to clean up chemical spill on Lombard Street. Welcome to InfoHub. His Excellency President David Granger has clarified that the reshuffling of diplomats within the Ministry of Foreign Affairs was a planned change and is in keeping with his vision to professionalize the Foreign Service. There's been no shake-up. Um, at the start of my presidency, I had made it clear that the ambassadors who were being appointed would be there for only three years and that it was my government's intention to professionalize the Foreign Service. That is to say, to reduce or remove political appointees and to allow career officers who had been uh, recruited uh, to become diplomats and had been trained and educated as diplomats to become diplomats. The head of state was at the time responding to questions on the sidelines of an event hosted on Wednesday at the Ministry of the Presidency. He explained that many of the diplomats' contracts ended during the time when there were uncertainties about an election's date. But as soon as the date was announced, the decision was made. So it is not a shake-up, it is a plan change and the ambassadors and high commissioners knew that um, the intention of the government has always been to professionalize the service, and that is being done. It's a plan that has, has been um, laid down and understood by the people inside the Foreign Service and, of course, by the ambassadors and high commissioners themselves. President Granger also explained his decision to remove Ambassador Audrey Jardine Waddell as Director General and appoint Charlene Phoenix as the Ministry's Permanent Secretary. Ambassador Waddell, um, is one of the persons who have been uh, a mark for foreign posting. And we have laid down certain criteria, and there are certain, um, for example, language qualification, and uh, Ambassador uh, Waddle um, speaks uh, foreign languages, and that is one of the criteria that we laid down, that uh, as far as possible, Ambassador and High Commissioners should speak the language of the capital to which they are posted. So she is qualified for a higher post, and um, on vacating the post of Director General, it was my decision to appoint a permanent secretary who would continue the administration of the The President emphasized that it is in national interest that these changes were made. The Environmental Protection Agency is working assiduously to clean up the chemical spill in the vicinity of the Leparkin Shipping Company on Lombard Street, Georgetown. The aim is to get the cleanup on the way as fast as possible to reduce further movement of the chemical. That was EPA's senior environmental officer, Tashana Redman. She explained that initial reports indicate that approximately 1,000 liters of the chemical reduce was spilled in and around the vicinity of the Guyana National Industrial Company between Tuesday night and Wednesday morning. The EPA is currently conducting their assessment, analysis and impact of the spill and would provide updates. The cleanup exercise and assessment are expected to be completed within 24 hours. Ubraj Narayan was today unanimously re-elected as mayor of Georgetown, while Alfred Mentor was re-elected as deputy mayor, following the mayoral elections held at City Hall. Alexis Rodney was there and has that report. The duo's re-election received the full support of councillors on the government side. 22 councillors voted in favour of the re-election. The new mayor promised to continue the exemplary work started by the council when he was first elected in November of 2018. I urge us all to work together for a smooth flowing of 2020. Have more understanding, communication and dedication for great good and dedication and serve our people of this great city we all call Georgetown. He called on councillors to bury the hatchet, extend forgiveness, and move forward with a clean heart for the good of the city. Deputy Mayor Alfred Mentor said he was elated to serve again. It clearly shows that myself or the mayor and myself 
has been doing something wonderful here at the council to, in order for us to repose the confidence in, in us here to continue for 2020. The council also elected a seven-member finance committee, which included Councillor Oscar Clark as chair and Councillor Ivla Henry as vice chair. Reporting for InfoHub, Alexis Rodney. Minister of Education, the Honorable Dr. Nicolette Henry, today visited several secondary schools in Georgetown to usher in the Christmas season. Secondary schools across the city are hosting Christmas luncheons for students as school is scheduled to close on Friday, December 13, 2019 for the Christmas holiday. Some of the schools visited by Minister Henry included South Rhineveld, Tugville and Charlestown Secondary Schools. Additionally, Dr. Henry visited the Bishop's High School, Queen's College, North Georgetown, and Cummings Lodge Secondary Schools. During the visits, the Education Minister shared life moments with students and teachers, even as they played games, watched movies, and engaged in melodious singing in keeping with the season. When we return, Guyana launches standard operating procedures to tackle trafficking in persons and close to $20 million in microgrants provided to Regions 5 and 6 farmers. Details of these stories and more after the break. Stay with us. Daddy. Welcome back. Guyana intensifies its fight against trafficking in persons with the launch of standard operating procedures for investigating and prosecution of trafficking in persons cases in Guyana. This is a collaborative effort between the International Organization for Migration and the governments of Guyana and the United States of America. Minister of Public Security and Chairman of the Ministerial Task Force for Trafficking in Persons, the Honorable Kemraj Ramjatan, said the SOPs are part of a greater effort to ensure that the rights of the victims are protected. He stressed that with wealth, Guyana is going to become a magnet for such crimes, adding that it is important for all stakeholders to be singing from the same hymn book. My fear is that if we do not set up the preparatory work to ensure that we are smarter, to know how to deal with them, how to identify them, how to interview them, how to prosecute them, we are not going to be that successful, notwithstanding that we're going to have lots of money and so on. They might be the ones who could then take away our territory. Regional Coordinating Officer for the Caribbean and Chief of Mission for IOM, Robert Metello, said the SOPs marked the beginning of hard work for the stakeholders. He urged them to quickly become familiar with the document. The success or the failure of a case can hinge on, a myri on myriad issues, such as deficiencies in evidence collection. Perhaps the tone of an interview can affect how information is gathered or not. Uh, or the collaboration between between a victim advocate and a prosecutor. So with these issues in view, the importance of following the procedures as closely as practicable cannot be overstated. Attorney at law and legal consultant Diana Shaw said other Caribbean countries are looking to Guyana as an example since it holds a tier one status on trafficking in persons. We want to ensure that from the very beginning, the persons who are contacting and who are having that first contact with victims are aware of the need to protect the rights of victims, that they are working with victims in a manner that ensures their trust, that respects their rights, and also supports their rehabilitation and recovery. Acting Chief Justice Roxon George said the launch of the SOPs is evident of Guyana's commitment to tackling trafficking in persons in a comprehensive manner. She noted that they will be used in the courts so that magistrates and judges are better equipped. 
Isaiah Brafitt for InfoHub. Nine farming groups in the Mahaika Burbies and East Burbies quarantine regions have received almost $20 million in microgrants to reduce the impact of natural disasters. Kellon Rover was present at the handing over ceremony and filed that report. The funds were provided under the UNDP's program titled Strengthening Disaster Management Capacity of Women in the Cooperative Republic of Guyana and Commonwealth of Dominica. Julian David from the Belladrum Cooperative Society Limited and Carolyn Ruhaman, chairperson of the Lightung Agriculture Cooperative Society, both welcomed the assistance. We can afford now to buy 24 nipples that the swine can use the water whenever they need instead of wasting and that is a, cost, a cost cutting for us because our water bill is very big. In terms of cleaning the pen because you know the walls and so on, we can afford now to buy a pressure washer. We can do the job more effective. We, the members of the Lightong Agriculture Cooperative Society, assure you that the grant given will be used for the purpose intended. And the success of this project will be beneficial to the residents of the Lightong community. True reduction in egg prices and financial assistance to the feeding program at the nursery and the primary school. Minister within the Ministry of Agriculture with responsibility for rural affairs, the Honorable Valerie Adams Yearwood, said the government is doing its part to caution the impact of climate change despite the challenges. With limited financial resources, one can do so much and no more. And that's the reason why we as a government embrace such and other programs of the UN and other local and international partners which seek to build the capacities of our people. UNDP resident representative Hero Valverde said the money would help the communities better prepare for natural disasters. He added that the microgrant scheme was designed using gender mainstreaming techniques to target both male and female farmers. The Japanese government provided the funds for the initiative, which commenced in 2018 and will conclude in June 2021. The ceremony was hosted at the Little Rock Suites in New Amsterdam. For InfoHub, I am Kellon Rover. Following a site visit on Tuesday, Minister within the Ministry of Public Infrastructure, the Honorable Jaipal Sharma, announced that emergency works on damaged portions of the Leguan Stelling are expected to be completed by Thursday, December 12. A counter overladen with paddy caused the collapse of a section of the Leguan Stelling. The contractor, who is also undertaking the $413 million Stelling upgrade, is executing the emergency works. Minister Sharma explains. We had initially said we are going to open up two grids. Two grids. So if you notice there, those, those row of piles, it's a grid. And two grids are going to be six piles. And if you notice, there's actually nine piles open up there. So with the extent of the damage is even wider than we thought. So we're now going to open a next farther grid. According to Minister Sharma, this will be done to ensure the structural integrity of the stelling and to ensure health and safety. I'm putting the, the, the commencement back on operation of the stelling to Friday. So Friday now we're looking at, because I don't want to just deal with the two grid or three grids and leave a, a grid that possibly could collapse at any point in time. During the inspection, Minister Sharma issued a call to residents. The person have to be responsible because if this stelling should give way, the whole leg one going to suffer. So all those that are using, utilizing the stelling for uh, trade, for commerce, uh, they should pay strict attention to whatever weight restriction is given by transport and harbor. The leg one stelling will be completed in two phases. Phase one will feature the upgrade of the deck at the stelling, and phase two will feature the construction of a concrete commercial area. For InfoHub, Stacey Carmichael. That's all for today. Connect with us on WhatsApp, Facebook, and YouTube. Much more news is on our website, dpi.gov.gy, and pop over to Instagram for the latest photo updates at DPI Guyana. Your bridge and weather reports are up next. Goodbye.